A lot of people get excited about using charitable remainder trusts to avoid having to pay taxes and get more benefit out of their investments, particularly when they have assets that have appreciated and they, they want to try to avoid the capital gains. So let's talk about that a little bit. Charitable remainder trusts, uh, there's a couple flavors of how they're done, but primarily you take assets that have appreciated. So let's say you bought $100,000 worth of Bitcoin years ago, and now it's appreciated and it's worth uh, $2 million. Rather than selling that and having 1.9 million of capital gains, which would be a long-term capital gains, instead you can donate it into a charitable remainder trust so you get full credit for a $1.9 million donation to a charity, if you will. Now from that, and it gets very sophisticated, and you have to use lawyers and preferably an account as well when you set these up. But the idea is that you put these appreciated assets into a trust, and then the trust is designed to live for a certain number of years. And during that period, it will pay out uh, a certain amount to a beneficiary. So this would be from the appreciation of these assets now that they're in a trust. So you're not getting any of the 1.9 million appreciated, but you're getting any uh, interest appreciation from that is getting paid out to you. So that's kind of what the notion is. Now, unscrupulous, and there's a lot of them, unscrupulous lawyers uh, promote charitable remainder trust as an incredible way to avoid taxes. You're avoiding taxes on the 1.9 million. But those taxes are at long-term tax rates, which would be 15 to 20% plus a NIT tax, which is like another 4%. So that's what you're trying to avoid. The difficulty with these is several fold. The first one is that each year you have to file a tax return on these trusts. Each year you have to use IRS numbers, and they're quite complex, uh, to show that your trust is still viable. And by viable, it means that it's still going to be able, at the end of the number of years, the term uh, that you set it up for, to pay that charitable donation to the charity that you selected. So and if you ever fail to meet that test, then the whole thing's unraveled, and the IRS whacks you for the capital gains on the whole amount. Plus, they hit you with some penalties. So this is very serious. And over the most recent years, there's been a lot of abuse uh, by charitable remainder trusts. And just this past year, the IRS has flagged charitable remainder trusts as being a listed transaction. By a listed transaction, this means that on your regular personal tax return, you have to declare every year that you uh, are a beneficiary of this charitable remainder trust. It is like an audit magnet, and it draws the IRS's attention directly to your filing that return and testing it. And a lot of people aren't filing those returns. They're not using correct numbers, and so they're trying to avoid taxes. So this is why it's become a listed transaction. But basically, you don't want to do anything that's a listed transaction because you're basically inviting IRS investigation. The problem with these trusts is that typically the lawyers who set them up create very aggressive conditions under which the trust will operate and it makes assumptions about interest rates and about appreciation. What happens is the trust administrator, in order to have to comply with these things, is going to take your assets and just simply sell them right up front so that he has assets that he can put into a fixed income uh, ass investment that will generate a fixed amount of return. But then, because of the actuarial interest rates and lifespan projections, after about a year or two, you can get into trouble where you're no longer going to sustain your beneficiary payout and the charitable payout at the end of the term, and that's when it gets unraveled. So ultimately, it's just a nightmare, and typically the lawyer who sets it up for you is the lawyer you have to rely on to recreate or reestablish this fund if it gets into trouble, but in fact, most people just simply go right into breaking the tax regulations on it and get burned. So I'd strongly recommend avoiding uh, a charitable remainder trust. In fact, in my experience, one of the problems that people find is that in, in that example I just gave you where the, you had 1.9 million of gain that's been deferred, well, you can use that to offset charitable 
gifts that you have, but you have to be generating 1.9 million of income over the next five years. You're limited to five years. Uh, and there's a limit how much charitable, your charitable gains are limited to 50%. So there's a number of regulations come in and quite frequently people with charitable remainder trusts can't even use the entire uh, tax avoidance uh, because there's other limitations that come in, which further unravels any ba any genuine benefit from charitable remainder trusts. I strongly suggest that you get a second opinion if you're looking at getting one of these.